Welcome to Strategy Saturday. I'm Charles Crillo, and today we're going to be discussing, should I passively invest in a real estate syndication? And this is a question I often get from potential investors or people that want to start building usually passive income from real estate, but they don't know where to invest. So first off, what is a syndication? Well, syndication is the pooling of funds from several investors to invest into a single real estate asset. And there are usually two groups of people in a syndication. There's general partners or operators and limited partners or passive investors. Typically, general partners will also be limited partners to a certain degree since they're usually or they should be investing money into the deal alongside the passive investors. Next, you might hear is an equity fund. Well, an equity fund is similar to a syndication, but the general partners are purchasing several properties, typically over a calendar year. Now, the benefit here is that you're spreading your investment funds over a lot more units, a lot more doors, but the downfall is you're not able to, if your money's already in there and they start purchasing assets and you don't agree with those assets or with how they're financing them or the business plan, that's a problem. It's much different with an individual syndication where you know exactly all of the particulars of the deal before investing. Next thing is liquidity, because this can differ if you're passively investing or actively investing. So real estate is an illiquid investment. However, in certain situations, you may be able to access cash from your real estate investments. If you own a property and has increased in value, you can refinance it or take out a supplemental loan against the property and tap your equity. These solutions are not quick or cheap and you'll be paying fees and spending months trying to complete the process, in addition to submitting endless amounts of documents to most lenders. In syndications, most funds, the funds are locked in. They're, they're locked in for the entire term of the investment. Now, I've heard of some general partners buying out uh, shares of their limited partners if there is an emergency, but I would not expect that, and don't bank on that happening. In that situation, there are going to be legal fees and general partners will probably buy you out for your initial investment amount. The trade-off is that typically the longer you own or invest into a property, the less volatile it is and more valuable it is if managed correctly. So for example, if the first few months of owning an investment property are when the majority of the bugs are worked out, new management is in place, deferred maintenance is being handled, non-paying tenants are evicted, etc. As the time of ownership lengthens, the property begins to run more and more like a well-oiled machine. If you have to sell your shares one or two years in, you've already sat through the most volatile part of your investment and returns and operations should only be getting better from then on. So any investment in real estate should be considered illiquid if it's in, even if it's active or if it's passive. Now, the investment term. Now, if you're flipping properties, then your term will only be a few months. But if you are a long-term investor, the terms usually range from three to 10 years. In a hot market, the whole times will be on the lower end. And in a stagnant market, the whole times will be on the longer side. Next is reserves. And every investor should have reserves, but more so on the active side, unless there's a capital call on the syndication you are invested into. You'll not have to provide any funds out of your pocket. Now, the deal operators should be keeping a reserve throughout the project from the beginning to the end to take care of any unforeseen expenses or CapEx items. There is also much more cash flow with large properties, syndications, compared to small properties that are typically owned by one investor, allowing for many unexpected expenses to be paid right out of the cash flow without the need for tapping any of the reserves. If you are an active investor, you might have major problems come up that you have to handle uh, and they're unexpected. With And if there is less cash flow to cover them, you're going to be requiring to tap your reserves all the time. Now, you should always buy properties. You should always keep reserves no matter what you're investing into. But when you're active, all that falls onto your shoulders. If you have you know, two single family houses and one of them has a $5,000 uh, issue that happens with you know uh, frozen pipes that burst and all this kind of stuff that happens. Um, in that scenario, they're going to come looking for you, and that's something you have to get done right away. That's not something that can be waiting around to get fixed. So it's very important always to have reserves. The difference, though, if this happens, uh, a huge event like that happens, and you have a syndication with 80 units or 100 units, in that scenario, you might be able to take that right out of your reserves at $5,000. Okay, um, and right out of your operating cash flow, that $5,000, you don't have to go into your reserves. So that's a huge benefit. 
Uh, next are investment minimums. So typically syndications require a $50,000 minimum. If you were to invest $50,000 into an investment property, you would only be able to really purchase a $200,000 property at a 25% loan to value. Now, this isn't including, including closing costs, reserves, repairs, the value add, etc. This is just the property. So for you to buy uh, larger properties, it's going to take a substantial amount of money for you to be able to purchase them, renovate them, and rent them out. Next is diversification risk. Well, with minimums usually being lower with syndications versus purchasing a property yourself, it's much easier to diversify with syndications. Your risk is also decreased with syndications, and your risk is limited to the amount of capital you invest. You are a limited partner, and you're not responsible for any of the debt or obligations of the property. Compare this to being a sole owner of the property where you will usually need to personally guarantee the mortgage if you're sued and you need to defend yourself and hopefully you have a solid asset protection plan. So this is one of the big things with it. Um, it's much more cut and dry with the syndications. First of all, you're, you're a limited partner, but also there's so many different LLCs and corporations that are set up with the syndication. There's usually one just for the property, uh, then there's one just for general partners, then there's one just for limited partners, and then you know, you're know you so you're now a limited partner, a passive investor of this business that owns the property. Um, so if anything ever happened on the property, you're so many corporations back, as well as being a limited partner, you really don't have any risk compared to when you own a property, no matter how many LLCs you have set up, uh, if something happens, you're gonna be one of the first people that are gonna be um, you know, served with lawsuit. When it comes to returns, now the more work I do on, the, on a project, the higher returns I require. And this is just a return on time kind of thing. If I am passively investing a seven to 8% cash on cash return and a total return in the double digits will suffice for me. Now, if I'm purchasing property myself, I wanna see double digit cash on cash returns, which is very difficult. If you're purchasing properties in C plus, the B minus areas and above, um, that's just, it's gonna be hard to hit those double digit cash on cash returns. Now, smaller properties are also more volatile than less and less predictable when compared to larger properties that you'll be investing into in a normal syndication deal, right? Because less doors, less income streams, and this could be anything you're investing into. Uh, small self-storage versus large self-storage, small multifamily, single family versus large multifamily. You have less income streams and if something happens where someone's delayed paying or doesn't pay or disappears or whatever it is, um, that's a larger percentage of your overall total income revenue for that property. Now, the return on time, this is a very important thing as I alluded to before, but when I'm planning on passively investing, I spend a few hours underwriting the deal and then on an ongoing basis, I will spend about an hour a year managing my investment. And it's mainly on reading a monthly reports and saving and sending the K-1 tax statement to my accountant. I mean, it's very bare bones. Compare that with the hours upon hours per week or month you'll be spending managing your own property or managing your property manager. I know when you're setting up with a new property manager, it's not just like, oh, here's the keys and good luck with it. You're talking to that person every day, um, even on the weekends for months uh, to get that property to get people, to get the property managers to know who your tenants are, to know the problems in the property, to start deferred maintenance, have that taken care of. So it's a lot of work. Um, after several months, that's when it becomes even a more of a semi-passive investment. But still, uh, if there's a problem, if there's a major issue, they're going to be calling you uh, directly for you to sign off on what's happening. With a syndication, it's not like that. It's all handled by the operators that make those decisions and you being a passive investor are just receiving your quarterly or monthly distribution. What I would do is perform a self-assessment before you make your decision if you're gonna passively invest. I mean, do you like acquiring and managing assets uh, like real estate? I mean, do you have capital? Do you have a high paying career? You know, what is your time worth? And what are your ultimate goals? I mean, most people get into real estate um, because of this thing called passive income, which is true. It does make passive income for you not being there spending time, but your properties are, like any piece of real estate, they're very management intensive and they take a correct team of management team that's on site there to be able to manage them correctly and for the right price so that you actually will make money on the property. So it's very important if you just like the passive investing side, if you just like passive income and not really the real estate side and you don't have the time, that's where you become a passive investor is the best part of it. If you 
love real estate and you want to get uh, hands-on active with doing it and you want to acquire and manage properties and build your own portfolio that you manage yourself or you have a property manager to take care of, go the active route. But it really depends on what are your ultimate goals and then make decisions uh, in that direction. If you're interested in learning more about the future investment opportunities of our company, Harborside Partners is working on, please go to harborsidepartners.com and click on invest with us. And um, we can speak to one of our partners and we can explain to you exactly how our process works and put you on our new deal list. So I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe, submit comments and potential show topics at globalinvestorspodcast.com. Look forward to two more episodes next week. See you then. Nothing in this episode should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Any investment opportunities mentioned on this podcast are limited to accredited investors. Any investments will only be made with proper disclosure, subscription documentation, and are subject to all applicable laws. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Syndication Superstars, LLC, exclusively.